Hi, everybody. Sorry, that was such a weird intro to the video. <laughs> Just to let you know, that is pretty much how every, every Yarn Geek Live goes because I am not a tech geek. I'm a <laughs> Yarn Geek. So anyway, I'm crocheting right now. I've got this blanket I'm working on. And I don't know how far you guys are all along in your crocheting, but if, if you've been doing it for any amount of time, good job. It is an amazing craft to know. It is uh, one of my favorite things to do in my whole world and my whole life. So to go back, I started crocheting when I was nine years old and I am 53 now. So what is that? 44 years ago. Ooh, moms and daughters at all levels. Oh, you have some moms there too. That is wonderful. Well, okay. So I learned, you're, you're going to like this story, moms and daughters. I have, I learned from my grandma when I was nine and she just showed me the basics. She showed me how to make a chain stitch with a crochet hook. And then of course I just wanted to do it with my hands because I was like, oh, I don't know about the crochet hook. But then I started using the crochet hook and she taught me how to single crochet. Well, I, after that visit with my grandma, I went home to my mom and I showed my mom how to do this. And so crazy, right? I taught my mom how to crochet when I was nine. And then she got totally into it. Well, lo and behold, we didn't just, we lived on a farm. We had a farm. It wasn't just any farm. It was a sheep farm. We had a sheep farm and sheep grow wool <laughs> on their bodies. I know, right? So this gave my mom all sorts of ideas. So we started, um, you know, getting the sheep shorn. I guess they had done it until then, but my mom just never used any of the wool. And so now she started keeping some for herself and she went ahead and learned how to spin, you know, do all the stuff with the wool and also started doing things like double crochet, learning different stitches. And, you know, by that time we were all in. Me and my mom were crocheting blankets. We were anything we could crochet, we would crochet. And this was back in the, when we started going at it um, a lot more, I was 10. And so this was 1980. Well, back then the yarn was not great. At least the yarn that you could buy in the regular stores like Walmart <laughs> and I didn't really, we didn't go to any other craft stores. Really, Walmart was the only place that we bought yarn. And back then, Red Heart Super Saver was the yarn that was pretty much what you got if you went shopping for yarn at Walmart. And it was very, very scratchy. But yarn since then has gotten so much better. It has come a long way, but you know, of course you could always buy, you know, you could always get hand spun wool like we had at my mom, you know, with my mom and we, we, I just, I've been crocheting ever since then. We still have some of the blankets that my mom made way back then. I have, you know, I made smaller type blankets back then because, you know, I wasn't into it as much as my mom was. And we have a few of the things that I made back then, but not as many as my mom's. So how old would those be? Like 40, those blankets are 40 years old. And, uh, <laughs> 
And then, you know, throughout my life on and off, I was always, you know, I always had a crochet hook. I always had some yarn, but I didn't have as much as I do now. Um, but I do have blankets that I started or that, yeah, about that they're about almost 30 years old. So I do have, and let me tell you that red heart super saver from the eighties does soften up in the wash. It did soften up in the wash and it still does. But, um, Let's see, let's fast forward uh, to, I guess, three years ago when when um, we all had to stay home for COVID. Well, actually, let me go back even a year before that. Even a year before that, I had been um, well, crocheting a lot, but I wanted to start a YouTube channel. And I don't know if any of you guys watch very many crochet channels on YouTube, but there were two in particular that I watched all the time. They were Bag a Day Crochet and Krista from the Secret Yarnery. Bag a Day Crochet did like shopping, yarn shopping videos, yarn hauls. That's where you go to Michael's or go to Joann's or go to any of these wonderful places that have yarn. And go shopping. I I don't know if you've ever watched anything on my channel since I started my channel. I've done tons of yarn shopping videos because I thought, oh my gosh, I can do that. That looks like lots of fun. But my first video was uh, back in 2019 and I had just come home from work and I was, and I had been thinking about it for a couple of months and I was like, Today, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to make a video. So I made a video and uh, I put it up right away. It's not very high tech. You can still watch it on my channel. It's the, my very first video ever where I'm showing all these blankets that I've been working on and how obsessed I am with yarn. And then <laughs> after that, I didn't make another video you know, for, it was almost nine or 10 months and just a few months after COVID started. And at the time that I started making my videos regularly, uh, I have seven, I don't know if Miss Veronica has told you, I have seven kids and only four of them were still at home at the time. We have um, three older daughters and four boys. And of course the boys don't crochet very much, but I didn't really put myself out there to, to have friends. I mean, I had friends with the kids, parents and things like that, that, you know, I would see at sports events or school events or whatever, but I had never connected with my own community or own group of friends until I started my YouTube channel. And then like the door for yarn community opened wide and surprise, surprise, there are so many people that love to crochet and knit and just collect yarn. But I, I have met so many wonderful people, made so many wonderful friends just by having a YouTube channel. And um, I, I communicate. See, not only do I have my YouTube channel, I also am on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, I don't, I don't know if you guys have ever had pen pals or if people even do that anymore, but it's so much more than having a pen pal. I mean, sure, you can text each other and everything, but with this uh, ever expanding world of technology, we actually get to talk face to face. Usually when I'm doing lives with somebody else, it, the screen is cut right in half and, and one of my yarn friends will be over there talking and, uh, but I also do a lot of lives with, by myself like this. 
So that's where we are now. That's where I am now. Um, I, I today would not have the, the community I have of friends. And now that my youngest son is getting ready to graduate high school next year, I am so grateful now that I have a whole community of people to talk to. And I love the fact that you guys are all taking crochet class and learning this skill that is so, I think it's very important to know. I mean, I will never, ever, ever have lack of blankets or sweaters or socks or scarves. And there's always something new to learn, new techniques, new uh, stitches. Have you guys ever heard of mosaic crochet or Tunisian crochet? These were two things because if you don't pass on the craft, it dies. Exactly. And we don't want this one to die because this one is, is awesome. And uh, if you guys haven't heard of mosaic or Tunisian crocheting, check it out. It will blow your mind. It is so amazing. I have, oh, there's also tapestry crochet. I was going to see if I have anything here. Let me show you a couple of things I have. Hold on. I'm going to back my chair up. Ah, okay. I've got a mosaic thing back here. This is something I made for Easter. And it's a table runner. And it just has, so it's really long and skinny, but this is an example of mosaic crochet where you can, you know, make the little pictures. Ah, it's pretty long. So I hope you guys got a good shot of, shot of that. If you want to see more like of mosaic crochet and stuff like that, you can check out my Instagram. I'm yarn geek on Instagram, yarn.geek. Or, you know, any of my old YouTube videos, but I have some really good pictures of the, wait a minute, what's that? Oh, okay. Of the tapestry things. Here's... Here's a blanket my mom worked on, gosh, 20 years ago. And this is made of 100% wool. And I can't show the whole thing. It's a king size bedspread, but it's all tapestry crochet. That's where you make a picture. Oops. It's got some cute little goats and ducks and stuff like that on it. So yeah, you just kind of can do a whole bunch of neat things with colors and patterns. And I, I think that's about it. I could just go, you know what? I could go on a whole yarn tangent and start throwing, <laughs> throwing yarn down on, and look at this, look at this. But you know, that might be a little bit boring <laughs> unless you're like, oh, wow. That lady's going crazy <laughs> with the yarn. So do you guys have any questions? Uh, let Miss Veronica know if you guys have any questions. I would love to answer them. Okay, fold up that blanket. 100% wool blankets are very, very heavy. Okay, I'll scoot back up. So have you guys ever seen, oh, do your daughters crochet too? My daughter, yes, my daughter Amanda crochets. She is now, she's going to be turning 33. She's a school teacher. Well, she's an art teacher. So she teaches art. Her art is more like drawing, painting, things like that. But she does crochet. And my next daughter, who is a fifth grade teacher, crochets. She crochets more than Amanda, I think. And I taught them when they were, and she is, she, she has my two granddaughters. 
my older granddaughter who is 10, I don't think is ever going to want to learn to crochet, but my little granddaughter who, who is two, it's so cute. She'll hold a ball of yarn and she'll get a crochet needle and she'll just go like, she'll like stab the yarn with it, but she tries. She gets a little string of yarn and go, like winds it around the crochet hook. So she definitely is showing interest and um, I, st I taught them probably, Brandy was about the age I was and Amanda was about 10. So they were, they're, they're only a year and a half apart. So I taught them to crochet about the same time that I learned to crochet when I was young. And let's see, my youngest daughter doesn't know how to crochet, but she sews. So she does some kind of, of, uh, craft and she also acts. She's, she's an actor. So she is more into the entertaining type kind of arts and uh, my boys, no, none of them crochet. None of them. <laughs> I, they they just never showed any interest, not because they're boys, but because they just showed no interest. Okay, any other questions? Because if you guys don't have any more questions, I am going to end the video here and let you guys get back to learning some crochet. I'm sure you guys have some stuff planned for today to crochet. So I am, oh good, <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so happy that you guys like this. And uh, yeah, I am happy that you guys are crocheting. It really is a wonderful, wonderful skill to have. One that you will take with you the rest of your life. And that, you know, even if you don't do anything big with it, it is very, it's just a very good personal activity. Plus, you know, someday, decades from now, when you have grandkids, you can make them little sweaters and cute things and take pictures. <laughs> oh, you are so welcome, Veronica. I am so happy to do this. And anytime you need somebody to come talk about yarn, I will be more than happy to. So you guys have a wonderful, wonderful night and have a wonderful class. And I will see you later. Bye, Veronica. I'll see you later, too. <laughs> Bye.